T-minus one minute. T-minus 50 seconds. T-minus 40 seconds. T-minus 30 seconds. T-minus 20 seconds. service announcement. I need all my Titan fans to come on down, grab you some popcorn, grab you a drink. Titans Coliseum in the building. Yeah, not not boy, I'm in the game. Still ballin' now, never change. I be rapping my hometown for the whole city, really knew my name. Boss talk, I don't do favors. Yeah, we signing deals with the top players. We just started this lifestyle. We be having all kind of haters. I'm a mad man, they better come give me one to botch me in, but I'm too shifty. If they come at me sideways, I'ma stiff on me like Derek Henry. Now listen, we are not the same. EA Sports, boy, I'm in the game. I be rapping my city, dog. Got a tight logo hanging on the chain. Big money, big moves, new stadium on the way. Nashville, we hold it down. We the one team that you don't wanna play. They be trying to talk down on us. I just laugh at them and I walk away. I don't tolerate disrespect. Might shoot the fade, pin it hard away. Big money, big moves, new stadium on the way. Nashville, we hold it down. We the one team that you don't wanna play. We be putting in the hard work, so we coming in without kind of skill. I be living in the end zone, my finger roll like Tanner Hill. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Yo, 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 what's poppin'? Welcome to the Titans Coliseum Podcast, man. You know who I am. We got my co-host RJ in the building. We got Firestone in the building. And as y'all can see, we got our homeboys in the building, our Jersey boys. Some of the <laughs> sickest motherfuckers that y'all will ever meet. And they gonna keep it focusing with you every single week on the sick podcast, man. Y'all give it up for Vinny and Jerry. Man. I'll tell you what, we steal that intro, man. That was, who, who was rapping? Was that RJ? Yeah, that was me. That was me. That was me. Oh, man, man, man. Yeah, that was me. Like, hold on. We're going to get to come up with some new rhymes now that half the team is gone. But I know, right? <laughs> shit, I was bumping. Doing listen, everything. listen, listen. I've seen the show before. I've seen the intro before, so that, that that's nothing new to me. But now that you got me and Vinny, but we don't have Sal, we got to get in that intro at some point. We might have to pay RJ. We might have to pay RJ. Let him make one for us. <laughs> I guess. Man, you, know. <laughs> you can get some of that DraftKings money that they took a year to play with. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, man, it's been so long since I took some Drow King money, man. They been taking all my money. I may have to stop investing in them, man. It don't look like I'm going <laughs> to ever win anything. Hey, the best gambling advice I can give you is don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm learning that one the hard way, man. But, hey, shout out to everybody watching tonight, man. Shout out to Top Tier, Julie, Corey, Andre, William. Everybody out there, man, y'all make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us, blah, blah, blah. This, that, and the third. LionsDenBeardCollection.com, man. Y'all make sure y'all head over there, use the promo code Coliseum, get 25% off, and also go over to SunnySmilesCoffee.com. Get your premium freshly roasted coffee from the man himself, Leonard Firestone. He got it right down deck. As soon as you order it, hey, he gonna go to work for you and he gonna get it out for you for free if you live in the USA. Yes, sir. And make sure y'all go to titanscoliseum.com. Go sign up for the email list. Read all the new articles we got and as well, merch. Y'all make sure y'all go grab merch. As most of y'all already know, we got the Let Rain Cook merch out now. Make sure y'all go get it before yeah, draft yeah. day. We're all at the draft party with the Let Rain Cook 
at, at the draft event. So we know we're going to be there at the Tennessee Titans draft party. So we look forward to seeing all y'all there as well. Man, right. make sure make sure y'all go join the Two Tone Militia group on Facebook, man. They're going to keep it funky with you. I mean, it's the same group of people, minus one from the Titans Army community. But uh, y'all head over there. Y'all join the group. You ain't going to get nothing but great content. And you can also catch our podcast over there as well. Hey, RJ. Yeah, you already know, man. Hey, we were just talking about it, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, if you haven't, you know what I'm saying, downloaded the song, man. I know everybody been asking about it. So if you haven't downloaded it on uh, Apple Music, Spotify, any of the, the big names, man, make sure that you, you know what I'm saying, go on there, get that download. If you can, click the artist tab. I got a lot of more. I got a lot more stuff that I can do, but it, it ain't about the types, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I've been rapping for a really long time, so, hey, yo, <laughs> there's nothing. Nothing wrong with a self, little bit of self promotion. Yeah, yes. most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> ah, yeah, man, you got to pop your shit, man. But uh, y'all ready to get to the two tone business? Yes, go. All right, let's get it, man. Um, we had uh, we had some visitors in town today. Um, Travante Sweat and Malik Neighbors. Does everybody know Travante Sweat? He Travante. Oh, good God! I'm slaughtering <laughs> this man's name. I'm gonna just keep it funky and say sweet. That's sweat. it. Because if you were on our podcast right now, you'd get crucified for grammar police. Yeah. Man, listen, man, they be tearing Ooh. y'all up on <laughs> 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 the grammar police. Uh, yeah, man. But uh, sweat. He was in Nashville today for his uh visit. Um, uh, as y'all know, he got into some trouble. Over the weekend, D D uh, DWI bonded out three thousand dollars, and uh, I'm gonna start it off with Vinny, man. Yo, your thoughts on Sweat? I mean, maybe he'll be there at uh, 38 now. Although I don't know if uh, if him and Morgan Wallen would be a good combo in Nashville because it seems like they both got in trouble uh, over the weekend. But we need interior help, bad. Um, this this guy took over the uh, what was it, the Senior Bowl. Um, he was the talk of the town at the Senior Bowl, along with a few other players. Uh, I'd be all for it at uh, at 38. We got to really see what we do with that first round pick to really see we, we, where we go with that second round pick. But we need interior help bad. Um, Big Jeff can't do it all on his own as good as he is. Um, we'll see if he's there at 38. This could end up being a blessing in disguise, his accident, although I don't advocate for anyone. Drinking and driving is very uh, immature and dangerous, in my opinion. But hopefully, he learns from it, and maybe he'll be there at 38. But uh, someone like that likes to drink and drive, he's probably going to be a Vegas Raider or a uh, Cincinnati Bengal, something yeah. like that. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, but right like, the alley. yeah. When you when you when you really think about it, I mean, you're going to see a lot of these kids. You know, with the draft with the draft coming up, there's going to be a lot of news. You know, breaking now that all of a sudden, um, what is it? Bleak neighbors now is a is a diva all of a sudden, like you're going to see all this stuff rumbling. Maybe the draft, you know, they, they're going to fall in the draft and let them fall in our lap. I don't care. Yeah. But with sweat, I mean, listen, there's not, ha there hasn't been a lot of off the field issues with him. So I'm really not too worried about that. I don't advocate for uh, drinking and driving. Absolutely not. So, you know, he is at fault at that, but I'm not going to kill the kid for, for doing it. I mean, granted, you know, now you're in the NFL, you're going to have those, those, um, abilities to get ubers you know you're gonna have that that lifestyle now in the nfl and um i'm about i'm about him man i always loved him I, he took over the um alabama game when i watched that he's a big body i loved him at the senior bowl as well and uh obviously now that nico's not there we need somebody interior and at 38 i already i had him at mock 1.1 uh, 1.0 i think for the sick podcast Logan titans i mocked him in the second round for us so i would love a, a big body next to jeff yeah. And the only thing that worries me a little bit, though, is that he knows this was the biggest month of his life and he chose to get behind. Even if he wasn't drunk and it was only a few beers, you have to know that you're putting yourself in a situation where you could kill somebody. You could, you know, wreck yourself. And, you know, he probably just cost himself a couple million dollars, maybe, unfortunately. So I question you know, his judgment, you know, leading up to the biggest day of his life. So it's, you know, hopefully he learns from it. But like I said, maybe it'll be a blessing and we could grab him at uh at, at 38 and put him next to Big Jeff. So we'll see. Yeah. 
because he's a young guy. So it's definitely a learning moment. Like it, this, yeah. this, your life's not over. Like you did make a big mistake. That's going to change from you. You're going to drop to the second round, maybe third or fourth round too, depending on some teams, how this really looks. You're really, really a talented player, but yes, this is about you being caught up in a moment of celebration and happy. One of the biggest moments in your life. And you, you made a, a young person decision. Like we do, we make mistakes from time to time, but that's why you got to have a circle around you too. That checks like, okay, Hey, if we're going out, one of us don't need to be drinking it, and one of us drives. We know what's in the future for you. We need to be protecting you, too, even at times where you don't see it, too. That's that's why a good circle around you is very important in these moments. So, yeah. Sweat, I would just want to get a better circle around you just so not just saying the people around you are bad, but just some guys around you just like ahead of it. Like, hey, all right, all of us are going out. One of us is not drinking. One of us is driving. And something we learned from the Todd Downing incident is uh, Tennessee Titans get free lift drives. So, bro, yep. you come here and there ain't no, no excuse for that to happen to you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll say this though. I'll say this. Look, man, I wish the Tennessee Titans had the third round pick right now, man. Especially with I feel like uh sweat might drop. I think some teams are probably gonna look at that situation and be like, no, nah, I don't want him with my second round pick. But man, I, we this he'd be a perfect trade, can you know trade up candidate if we can go from the fourth to the third, you know, you know what I'm saying? Man, I would love to have him in the third round, but the second round, I don't know, it might be a little bit of a reach, especially if he if he is it known uh, to make mistakes, you know what I'm saying? Very prone to making mistakes. It hurt this team you know what i'm saying it hurt the future you know because i i would i would love to have somebody put it right next to big jeff but man that, that dwi you know that's a, that's tough right there man yeah and so, you're not in Green Bay, wisconsin or you know podunk yeah, town you're, you're, in, you're in nashville you know so right. you're gonna have every uh temptation in the world down there so so yeah, RJ, yeah, you got my yeah. you got my gears turning right now. Since you said there's no third round pick, I want to start this podcast up just like I started my podcast up with these guys. Um, obviously, you said there's no third round pick. Is it more pressing to you to keep at seven and draft that left tackle, or God forbid, Malik Neighbors, or should we trade down this pick and acquire that third round draft dra uh, third round pick that we all need? Because we need there's so many holes in this roster to fill. So what's your take on that? Because I I, I haven't seen any takes from you guys on that. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of trading down. I mean, there's a lot you can get Latham, who was in the building too, as well. They're doing their they're doing their due diligence on these tackle prospects and these wide receiver prospects. So depending on how this draft rolls out, I think Rand pulls the trigger and moves back a little bit. I'm not saying far, I, but I think he's going anywhere from 10 to 15 to try to pull so that. Jay, so Jay, I, I I've been watching your show, man, and I I'm with you, bro. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on the Brock Bowers train just like you is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I watch a lot of SEC football, so I like yeah. Brock Bowers. So I say with trade back, go ahead and get us a play, a playmaker, a proverb that's tight end. Maybe if Roma Doozy's there, you can take him. Maybe we get Latham. I'm cool with Latham as well, you know what I'm saying? And go get, you know, because I look at what the Bills did when they drafted for Josh, when they tried to get Josh Allen, and they gave up a first, second, and third round pick to move from this actually the same spot, and that's what from 11 to 7. You know, mm -hmm. to go get Josh Allen. So I just look at it like this, man. You whack somebody, man. And they, uh, for what I've seen from Rand Carthon, man, he yeah. has been killing these trades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's been killing these trades, and I feel like he go he can finesse another one. He's doing the Howie Roseman of the AFC, though. Now, yeah, if, most definitely. If they mm -hmm. trade it back for for Latham, though, does it concern you at all that like we've still neglected the left tackle position because he's a tackle, but he's a right tackle. Yeah, but you got one of the best coaches in the offensive line mm -hmm. in football, and and supposedly now, if you if you've been looking, you know, with the rankings now, Latham is jumping overall, and he is a huge anchor. Yes, he plays right. But can he play left? Well, I, you know, I talked to a lot of Alabama fans, and they've been telling me that he can play left tackle. Like they say, he can. They say he can play both left and right. And another one, another guy that that, that can play left and right is Amarius Mills from Georgia. As well, I talked to a lot. He of scares guys. me. Yeah, I know he got he do have a lot of injury concerns. I, I don't know if I want to take him in the first round, especially not that high, but but he most definitely can play left and right. And I think he has the probably the most potential out of all the tackles out of all of them. But he just like I said, he does get hurt, you know. So I think these guys are being talked up and down right now. I'm not going, I'm not going to you know, rule out anything, but at the same time, you got to understand what these GMs are doing. I mean, they're trying to talk guys down, which could be the situation with mm -hmm. Malik Davis. He ain't putting out that, well, whoever's putting out that, that he's a diva or whatnot. There could be a GM saying that, wanting them to 
want Malik to fall to their team. So yeah, Morocco, I'll say this. You remember last year with the big CJ Stroud, you know what I'm saying? S2 test was so terrible. It was the worst we've ever seen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's not going to be good. And remember, I, I know this was coming from us. I know it was. We was man, trying to make it seem like CJ Stroud was the worst quarterback ever so we could draft him, you know, <laughs> so the Texans would probably be, would pass on him. For me too. If they're not big on Latham, though, you know, and they could pick up a third, maybe an extra fourth, and they're that high on them, you would have to think they know something we don't. That being said, I think we're in a great position where we could just let this draft come to us because you're going to have four quarterbacks go ahead of us. You're going to have a, a pick, hopefully, of, uh, you know, either Odun's neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., Joe Alt. So I think they're in a great position to let this this uh, – this draft come to them. But that being said, I'm, I'm on the Joe Alt train. I think he's as, as close to a can't, can't miss prospect in this draft. And for what we've been through the last two years at the left tackle position, I would have let them put Morocco in at, at the end of last year, man. I ain't finna sit out there and take their killer. <laughs> I get paid like a motherfucker, but goddamn, I wouldn't be able to get on Twitter anymore. <laughs> but I'm just saying it was that bad. It was that bad the last two years. And I think we are very fortunate and lucky and blessed to have maybe one of the best left tackle prospects fall into our lap at seven. That being said, we don't have a third round pick, but you know, I, I don't know. To me, don't overthink it. Take take Joe Alt if he's there. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that too, because I, I think I, I'm worried that Joe Alt might not make it past the Chargers, even though they're talking about wide receiver, wide receiver. Joe Alt is still a thing that they need there to build around for for Justin Herbert as well. So, if I'm Rand Lake, said just let it come to you. If Neighbors is there for us to be there at the potential and you think that you got a, a tackle later in the rounds that you can go get, we can do that. And then we can use trailing as a third round pick trade later on after the draft. If we sit there and we realize one of these wide receivers, we didn't expect falls to us at seven. We go to them. If not, if all think there and these wide receivers, we want ain't there. We can trade back, do what we want and then try to get a third round pick there. But we're set up in a position that, like you said, you can let the draft come to you. We really don't have to work anything. We can kind of see how draft night goes and where we're sitting at when it comes time for that seventh round pick. Yeah. yeah so let's, uh, let's get to a couple of comments. Uh, got James in the building, man. Shout out to James, man. We uh, we keep saying Callahan is the best. All his uh, Pro Bowl offensive linemen are like top 10 picks. We got Orlando in the building. Uh, shout out to Orlando. He says, good thing is we should get a premier player. I think he's talking about if we uh, stick at seven, which I'm leaning more towards that, just to be honest with y'all. I'm leaning more towards just sticking and picking because the Titans, they do need that blue chip player. They do need that premier player that you could uh, possibly get in the top 10. And uh, we got Chisholm in the building, man. Shout out to you, bro. Uh Got to get all charges going for a top wide receiver for her. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, we had this discussion earlier uh, in the Tennessee Titans Elite Group, man. Uh, man, you know Jim Harbaugh, he, uh, John, Jim, whoever the fuck, uh, which other that is, Jim. Okay, so you already know, man. He he run heavy. I mean, yeah. he love offensive linemen. So all could be off the board. I mean, who to say? I mean, I know they got uh, they left tackle up over there, but they still need help on the other side. What if they go late though? Yeah, you bro. They they got they got they got Slater left too. Yeah, they yeah. got Ron Slater. So if they do go get get late them, that would be a damn good pick for them. That line would be on point, bro. You know. Yeah. You yeah, I, I just play. I just seen a video from the Chargers offensive line coach saying, you know, offensive line is pivotal, like like Rock was just saying too. So they can, you know, throw the curveball here if they stick and pick and Arizona doesn't come up, Denver doesn't come up, and they stick and pick and they get all or Latham. Then again, whoever that offensive tackle goes there, we do have that wide receiver still sitting there. And I think for us, we either take it or RJ, get on my back because 
I'm trading back, man, and I'm going for Brock Bowers. Everybody says, oh, you're a Brock Bowers homer. I'm not. I'm a Florida State fan. I just know football, and he's a generational kind of talent. You have neighbors. You have Marvin Harrison Jr. You have Joe Walt. All these guys are generational, just like uh, uh, the guy just said, uh, the comment. We, we're going to get a blue-chip premier player no matter where we go in this draft, I believe, in a top 10 or 11. So I'm very excited for two more weeks. But realistically, yeah. how far do you think Brock Bowers will last? Because I don't think he's going to make it out the top 10. So that's my he, thing for trading back. I don't think he's going to pass the Jets, that's though. That's you know what I'm saying? Who? The Jets. I just I just had a, I had that come to mind that I think the Jets may try to trade up to get old. That's another team you got to watch out for because Tyron Smith, he, he played 14 games in, what, three years? They need a cornerstone left tackle, too. So they're going to try to jump in front of the Tennessee Titans. Mm -hmm. So you got to watch out for them. Now, if a team does jump up and, and takes all or just someone ahead of us takes all, uh, would you guys be okay with, you know, a Malik Neighbors cause, or Marvin Harrison Jr.? I would or, be more than okay or, with oh, those. Yeah. Or, 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 I'll be, be at the Titan, I'll be at the Titan facility washing cars if we get Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> or Malik <laughs> Neighbors. Yeah, if we get Malik Neighbors. I'm gonna be. Are we going to the game? I mean, to the uh, to the draft party. I'm gonna be out there dancing. <laughs> you gonna be watching cars with me? Fuck that. People go out there. I'm gonna be doing all type of dance moves out there. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm buying the jersey that day. Oh God! If they take Neighbors at seven, hypothetically, if he's there and we take him. In the second round, which which tackle prospect do you like the most? Because you have you would have to think maybe Guyton could be there. Uh, Patrick Paul from uh, Houston, I believe, could be there. If we go neighbors at seven, you have to think a hundred and ten percent that second round pick is an offensive lineman. Yeah, um, Guyton is more of a right tackle, ain't he? Who? Uh, Guyton. Yeah, yeah but who's the same? Play. I mean, we don't Pride know how they feel he about right down. now. He's, He's not like going to left tackle at senior bowl, but it didn't look yeah. as smooth or as nice as he did on the right side. He definitely looked way better on the right side than he did left. So that's my thing, too. I, I It gives me faith because it seems like <laughs> if you're going to go skill position players in a draft and you kind of know that over offensive line, then wouldn't you try to go get the best coach to try to help build up what you're going to not have the best of character and let these other character players shine out that are generational talent that don't really need too much coaching. So they might just be like, Bill, who do you think you can work with, who you can build? Because that Browns offensive line last year was injured left and right, and everybody that came in played fucking well for him, no matter if they were second string or third string. So I would just see that as long as Bill and Rand is sold on them in the second round – that, that has to be it. But, man, that's that's where I'm trying to figure out. It's like, who do I think realistically is going to last to the second round that's going to be a good option for us at the tackle position? If all is there at seven, he he is – and, and we're, we're sticking with that pick. Is he is he the pick for you guys? Yeah. I think he's, yeah. I think he's the pick. I, look, as much as I, I, I want – I've been flirting with other, with other players, man. No Diddy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? I, I, I still think, man, I, I, I said I was going to do it. I'm going to post a sticky note that said the Titans will be selecting Joe out with the seven pick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just, I'm, I'm going to go and step on that, man. Yeah, I agree. Now, now let's, let's, let's go this way in the second round. Now, we're picking all in the first, all right? Everyone agrees on that, if that's the case. Do you go after wide receiver, or do you fill another hole that we desperately need in, in um, inside linebacker? or uh, safety, because I, we have $39 million left in cap. Obviously, they're playing the draft right now. Whoever they don't get in the draft, they're going to target in free agency, uh, uh, you know, a veteran, you know, one- or two-year deal. So who do you want in the draft in the second round that's going to be a staple for this team at 38? I'm not Anybody you guys looking I've at? A, I've, been a, I've been a whole stand for uh, Xavier Leggett. And so you want wide receiver? I'm going to say this. I've been a stand for Xavier Leggett. I love A.D. Mitchell, love Worthy, love Franklin, but I have to be realistic here. If we go offensive, if we go uh, offensive tackle in the first round, I think we need to give the defensive line a look in the second round, depending on who's available. And let me just go ahead and get this out the way. Because the Titans are not taking sweat 
and pick 38. They, they're just not going to do that. I mean, I, I rock with Sweat. Love watching his tape. But at the same time, he's going to be coming in and he's going to be, you know, primarily a nose tackle. I mean, he he he's going to be out there. Hey, we need that for Jeff. We yeah, need we, need, Jeff. we need that. But it's, it's how big out. of a priority yeah, is that for us? Do we do we need another three technique more, or do we need a nose tackle more? Because you you got to think about it. We got to replace Autry as well. Well, Sweat can get to the – Sweat has a pass rush and a run stop. Like, yeah, he might be a three technique and a nose tackle most time, but he can do both. If you line him up next to Simmons and then you got Key out there and then you got Landry out there and you tell them, hey, push, and then Sweat, you just kind of stay back and watch for the runs and stuff, that plays a whole lot of other football. That lets your ends rush in more quickly knowing that there's somebody on the back end that will play cleanup for them. They can rush more quickly, and Sweat does do that. But this DWI thing – I don't see. I don't. I don't know if we can take him at the second round at thirty-eight. Now, with as much talent as in his this draft, I still think defense defense is where we got to go. If we go offensive tackle that first round at seven, then that second round has to go defense, defensive line or linebacker. How do you feel about about Chris Braswell out of Alabama? Uh, I like him. I mean, I was looking. He's more of like an edge, no. Yeah, yeah, he could play. He could play the three technique a little bit, but he not. He mostly definitely on the outside. Yeah, no, I mean, I was looking at Robinson. I mean, you got you know Chop Robinson, but uh, Chop is nice, huh? Chop is nice. Yeah, Chop's nice, but I mean, he he was graded at you know in the first round at, once before, but you got um Wilson from NC State too. You got Ju- uh Jeremiah yeah. Schrader Jr. too. Uh, there's there's guys I would love to pair a young athletic quarterback that can actually cover and play the run, and we need that. So I mean, I'm not too high on the Kenneth Murray signing. So it's a flip of the coin for me. I have no idea what the hell Rand's gonna do. This is the first time in this draft I have no idea because you have a head coach that says I, I favor you know, touchdowns versus, you know, all offensive line. So that, that right then and there rings the bell on Titans fans and podcasters like us saying, hell yeah, our coach is going to go for Malik neighbors, you know, Rome or, or Marvin Harrison Jr. So, and then us, we were like, no, you know, let's play smart fans here. We have to protect Will Levis's blind side for the next 10 years. So, I mean, it's a great problem to have, but like I said, I have all the faith in Rank Carthon, man, because he's been absolutely fucking killing for the last two years. Yeah. I say this though, man. It's oh, things man. like, bro, every time they put Rand Carthon on stage or put him in the yep. mic in front of his face, he keeps saying, like, man, there's a lot of depth in this left tackle, at the tackle uh-huh. position. The, we need playmakers, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's like, man. And faster on offense. <laughs> like, is that smoke? Is that just to pump everybody else up? Or is that realistically what we're going to do? Like, that's the hardest thing to realize. Like, are we falling for your, but like, are you playing chess and not checkers and we're falling for your fucking moves here? Or is that legitimately what we're going to do? And you're just like, this, this is it. You can't stop what we're going to do anyway. Or there's just that much talent. It would be I, badass. I, it would be badass though. If they trade back, you know, Titans trade back. And then when they get on the clock at like 11 or 12 and Bowers is on the board, and then Mr. Paul Heyman comes to the microphone. No oh, man. And then <laughs> and then just uh, and just announces it. You know. Oh man, that would that would be dope. I ain't gonna lie. I I, I rock with Brock Bowers. I would uh I would rock with them if we trade back. I just wouldn't take him at seven. I, no, seven's too early. Yeah, can't take it at seven. But let's get to a couple of comments, man. Uh man, shout out to Mike Patton in the building, man. Y'all make sure y'all head over to his podcast, man. Uh Man, y'all turn him up. He talking all AFC South up over there. He know everything about every team in this division. So y'all make sure y'all go turn Mike up on his social medias and catch his podcast, man. He has some dope, dope ass guests on there as well, man. But he said he would look at two uh country grammar at uh 38. <laughs> They've been tearing me up about um Xavier Leggett. They just say I just want Xavier Leggett because me and him sound alike, but man, <laughs> fuck y'all. <laughs> hey, boy, I like Xavier Leggett, man. He he's a straight up athlete, man. You know, I think he got he got a little Debo. I think people keep saying AJ Brown. I see a little bit more Debo than AJ Brown in my opinion. AJ Brown is like he he just way more smoother than just Xavier Leggett, man. Yeah, hey, I don't know. It's 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 a two completely different players to me, man. I see. D, I see, uh, not Debo, but I, I see more DK and uh, yeah, DK too. Yeah, but Marlo, he Marlo says they need to go get either a linebacker or a secondary help in the second round. Ah, uh, 
I I mean Same linebacker. Way. Here's my thing about linebacker. I understand that you know everybody's searching for that green dot linebacker, in which like Rand said, it doesn't necessarily have to be the linebacker, but let me just be blunt here. I could care less about linebacker right now in the second round. If there's a dude there, I mean, that they like, okay, cool. That's one thing. But me sitting up here entertaining a linebacker, a linebacker in the second round, I can't do it because I really don't give a damn about the linebacker right now. But um, secondary, I damn sure wouldn't go get a safety with a second round pick. Mm-hmm. No, nah, you don't like, you don't like Tyler Newman out of Minnesota. No, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch I'm no good. safety in the second round, man. I mean, you still you got veteran that. safeties out there. And plus two safety is another position that you can get in later rounds. That second round pick, I'm looking at it damn near like a first round pick. We need a legitimate player, a bona fide starter. And you know, uh, an impact player, if we can get it. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play around with non premium positions with that second round pick. Then, then you look at it like this though, look at the free agency at safety. Like, we don't have to rush to get a safety. Like, you know, you still got Justin Simmons there, you still got May, you still got, you know, what I'm saying other people there that said, I don't know all the safety market, I don't have it in front of my face, but I know the safety market is pretty deep because ain't nobody going at the by trying to spend their money on safeties right now. Mm-hmm. Same way with running backs, like, even there's gonna be plenty of running backs in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round that are good, you know. Yeah. How would you guys like feel about a cheap, a cheap? A cheap, very cheap one year deal for Jamal Adams. No, man, I wouldn't no. touch Jamal Adams. Man. Would you put him at linebacker? <laughs> Damn, hell yeah, I'd put him at linebacker. That's all he'll be. That's That's not, he, 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 if he stays on the field. If he yeah. stays on the field, yeah, exactly. That that's another part of it, man. This motherfucker can't stay healthy. We don't need no soft tissue guys no more. Nah, I'm not. I'm not putting them got dang it nowhere in the secondary. I got oh, Andre Diggs there too. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I mean, I take a, I take a chance on Quandre Diggs any day before I fuck with uh, Jamal Adams. Yeah. I was just floating it. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. That Jamal Adams shit. That shit scared the fuck yeah. out of me. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I think there's some familiarity with uh, our new defensive coordinator, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. I think he might have been with him in uh, – actually, I might have just made that up, but I don't know. Uh, I-, I wouldn't mind it on a cheap one-year deal, in my opinion. I, I think if you can get him for a million dollars, two million dollars, um, why not? You know, I'd rather do that almost than pay a safety like Justin Simmons. who's going to command, you know, a pretty big deal. Um, but you know, we'll see. I, I agree with you though, Morocco. I think that second round pick has to be an impact player from day one, considering we do not have a, uh, a third round pick. Um, and it's all contingent on what we do in, in the first round, but it's a good position to be in, but you never know if they move back in the first round and pick up a, a third, it could change their direction as well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'll tell you what, because Jarrett loves to bring up what Callahan said on every podcast. Hold on, hold on. Let me cut you off, Vinny, before you get to that. Make sure y'all drop y'all link. Tell the people where they can get that those hats from. You're going to have to talk to upper. This is above my pay grade. You're going to have to talk uh, to the management. It's, you know? it's sickattire.com. <laughs> if you type in sick podcast, it's the first link, but sickattire.com. I'll send you, I'll DM you the link, uh, James. And then he said, "Was there a was there a uh, dress code tonight? We're all wearing black t shirts with black." Oh t-shirts. wow! Yeah. Didn't even oh, I know, that. man. Didn't even I, mean, shit, I guess we just be vibing with each other yeah. through the universe yeah. or something. Yeah, I was just gonna say maybe it all means something. The solar eclipse. We're all in the same <laughs> the solar eclipse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll tell, what, I'll tell you what, that earthquake we got in New Jersey was more entertaining than that fucking solar eclipse. Yo, that, that was wild last week. Oh, uh, yeah, they said yeah. Ice Spice shook some shit up up there. Yeah, man, <laughs> I, was a, I, was a, I was at a light and my car started shaking. And I was like, motherfucker, I just had a flat tire. I'm like, this fucking car. And I just got a, a safety recall for, for my car, too. I'm like, fuck, man, because it was shaking like crazy. And then my, uh, my uh, wife called me and said that the house is shaking. I saw it's got to be an earthquake, hopefully. Either that or China and Russia is going to end it for us. We've been talking about like trading back in the first round, and Andre brought up a point too. It's like, would y'all be, um, would y'all be all right with trading back in that second round? Think you can grab a third rounder pick 
with that with trading back, or is that going to be too much of a, a cost? I mean, if, if this receiver class is so deep, you know, Morocco just named a bunch of different players, you know, that could be there. Um, Leggett, Xavier Worthy, um, the other Texas oh, nice. receiver. You know, if they feel as though there's – or even one of those tackles. If, if uh, you know, if they feel as though there's someone there that they could get 10, 10 – I, I wouldn't want to trade, you know, to the end of the second round. But if they can move back five or ten picks, pick up a, a third round pick, and still get the player that they wanted, I'm, I'm all for it. It's come to the point though, and I think we've all feel this way. You know, we we've talked about it before. Is that I, we're really starting to trust Rand Carthon and his vision. Um, it's a new generation of, of Titans football. Hopefully, with a whole new style that we're not really used to. We're used to the ground and pound. But um, what I was saying before is Jared loves to talk about what. Callahan said about valuing players that could score touchdowns more than most players. Yes, he said that. And then we paid Calvin Ridley $50 million guaranteed. So I necessarily think that that move was made with the intention of taking a tackle at seven. If neighbors is there, sure, go for it. Um, because at the end of the day, we aren't sure what the receiving core is going to look like next year. D hop could be gone. He's only got one year left. Traylon Burks, we'll see. Hopefully we get the best out of him with with, with uh, Callahan. He's playing more of his natural position in the slot, hopefully. But if they took a receiver, you know, think about it going forward. You can have Calvin Ridley, Malik Neighbors. You know, that's a nice little one-two punch for the next, uh, you know, four or five years at least. Yeah, because that's what I've argued a couple of times, like why we might need – and this was all before Calvin, but I still I still feel this way. We got to grab a receiver in the first or second round just because of the fact, all right, D-Hop's gone next year. If Traylon don't work out this year, then we're going to be just Calvin Ridley. Then three years in a row, we're going to have to go out there and get the number one free agent wide receiver, which it's cool to talk about two years, but you don't want to keep doing that year after year. You want to draft a guy that – He's building around, and we got Calvin Ridley at what 29 D hops one year deal, 30 something. So, we got to get a young guy at least under D hops mentorship, too, just in case Trey Lindbergh's isn't it. And if he is it, then cool, we're good, even even better than we thought we would set up for the future. Shit, I love that third round uh pick, you know, trading uh Trey Lindbergh's with a third round pick option, too. If we get oh, neighbors, man. So if we get a I'll be down with it, too. Uh, if a so team would take it, my man, shoot. So I ain't yeah. gonna complain about it, but or, or even if, you, if there, you get a fifth form, if you get a fifth form, I believe you have uh have a fourth, two fifths, two six, and you know, what, two sevens. You can yeah, take you, you can package those up. to trade up. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be mad at that. It, I wouldn't be mad at that. I mean, it just it just depends on you know whether they like Traylon Burks or not. I mean, they may they may look at Traylon like he ain't been he ain't been in his natural position. The last couple of seasons, he hasn't been around good offensive minds. I think we could work with these guys. But then again, they may be looking, they may be looking for somebody in the draft to replace him because um Callahan did Callahan, he really didn't have, you know, a ring a ring and endorsement for Traylon Burks when he was speaking on him. He was just talking like, you know. Trailer needs to do this and trailing trailer needs to do yeah. that and which he didn't I didn't say it didn't sound too convincing to me. I mean he deserves nobody's ringing endorsement at this moment. You know, Sal's brought it up before, you know, he questions his work ethic a little bit. Seems like his demeanor and posture acts like he's as if he doesn't really care that much. But we we'll see. Like I said before, though, it is a very good position we have at seven with these four quarterbacks, and you never know. Michael, they're hyping up Michael Penix Jr. And maybe the Raiders want to come up. Oh, next. And, and yeah, maybe the Raiders want to come up and, and get him at seven. And we can get a haul for, for that seventh round pick. You just don't know. But if you assume the four quarterbacks are gone, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunes, Joe All, two of them have to be there. You know what yeah. I mean? At, at, at seven. If four quarterbacks go, in the top, you know, seven, and then those other two picks are receivers. We're going to have a choice of one of those receivers, most likely probably going to be Odunze, in my opinion. I don't know if we're pronouncing that right. We've gotten crucified for Odunze, Odunze. But it, yeah, yeah, he's Italian. That's it. He's from <laughs> <laughs> Um, But it's a, good, it's a good problem to have. But I am still of the conventional mindset that you found your when you're building a football team, you got to do three things. You got to get a quarterback, then you got to protect them, 
then you got to attack the opposing team's quarterback. And for that reason, I think we go offense. We got our quarterback. We got our left guard. Let's get our left tackle. And then in the second round, let's go attack the defensive line, in my opinion. I'm with you on that. And I've seen a comment that James has been firing away. I've been seeing a comment uh, James has been firing away, too, and I just mocked him in my 2.0 draft uh, for the podcast as well. Javon Baker, man. Yeah, out of, uh, yeah dude. He, he was a five, yeah, uh, Central Florida. He was a five-star recruit coming out, and he just balled out. If you if we could grab him, shit, at the fourth and fifth, like he said, and I mocked him in the fourth, that's another bowler that, that, that's out there. you know. And he's being slept on in this draft because you have major names at the top of this draft class. And he's yeah. just being slept on because he went to a smaller, smaller school, not really a smaller school, but not an SEC type in uh, LSU and Ohio State and all that. So don't sleep on that name. Is there a Yo, guy? Oh, gee, what's good, man? Y'all make sure y'all head over to Ken Moore Sports, man. He back doing this thing on the danger zone, man. So y'all make sure y'all head over to OG's social media accounts and turn him up. Is there a guy that you guys might – like in the later, let's just say for argument's sake, we don't end up acquiring a third round pick. Is there a guy that you guys have an eye on that you think could be a, a sleeper in that fourth, fifth round area that you think could make an impact uh, on the team? So uh, posit- uh, we talking about one particular position? Or- anybody, anybody, anybody you might like that you think could be there in the fourth round. Um, I, I got one. I'll say Malachi Corley out of uh, Western Kentucky. I think that he could be there in the fourth round, man. I really like his game. I know he he really played against some bad competition over there, and the, uh, I think where they play in the Sun Belt. But you know, I just look at it like this, man. That boy, that boy is out here trucking folks and doing all type of crap. I just I just want to take a chance on him to see what he could do. Didn't he have yeah. a good senior bowl too? Yeah, he had a good senior yeah. bowl. But I, I'm always bad at evaluating like which rounds people's gonna go on, so you know, crucify me if you want. But um, like Lad McConnell will be something good, like there, Luke, Luke McCaffrey, especially if we're gonna move on from Traylon. If you really want a slot guy that's fast, and then a guy that can possibly make some plays with his new kickoff return strategies, that you can put them both back there as well to make some things happen. So um, that might be some guys if they're there. In the fourth or fifth round, I'd be looking for if, especially if we go left tackle at one, defensive line at two, then that fourth and fifth with fifth, we can go get us a true slot, little quick, quirky guy that we can also play on special teams as well. What about like a, a third? What about a third running back now with the kickoff Are, rules? Now, would you like Will Shipley? Late. He's on a cleansing. Yeah, I think he's a good back. Yeah, I, 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 right. Yeah, that's you know obviously that's I'm a Tennessee guy, so you know David. <laughs> I, just he, I, I just think he's gonna go into third. Man, he ran a four three at the during combine. I said, oh yeah, it's a wrap. He a power back that runs a four three. Like it's, it's gonna be hard. You got Trey Benson. You got also have Braylon Allen, who I think will be there in the fourth fifth round as well. He he could do. He could easily get a yard. You know, <laughs> yeah, that boy's huge. You know, um, uh, Audrey Estamine from Notre Dame is another guy as well. Man, I like. Dylan um, Johnson, Washington, big yeah. power back. I like him. I remember watching him in the uh in the national championship game in the uh the game before that as well, the playoff games. Uh he's a good running back. Uh I do like uh Kamari Lasseter. I, a lot of people have stopped talking about him because he ran a four six at Georgia. Uh he might have won a four six, but man, I watched him in the SEC dude. He was locking people up left and right. You know, I don't know if we, we need any more corners right now, but uh I like Roman Wilson from Michigan as well. The little wide, little fast wide receiver they yeah. have. Bro, I don't think he's going to be there though. That dude has to be a second and third round pick. Has to be. Yeah. Ron yeah. Davenport was talking very highly of him, man. Mm-hmm. Bro, his senior day was or senior bowl, bro. Mm-hmm. It was impressive him out there on practice. Man. All right, All right yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to a couple of comments here. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna start it off with our guy running man. Shout out to running man Callahan like big. Slot receivers, so McCaffrey makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, look at uh, look at what he had um with the Bengals. Tyler Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd is like what six six what six, six, six one six one six two something like that. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, he he definitely likes a particular type of uh, slot receivers, and plus two, you know, you see that all around the league too, man. Uh, slot receivers aren't the same. 
yeah, small yeah, guys from back in the day. Like, nah, dudes out here, six foot, six foot three, some of them six foot five slot receivers, man. You I mean, Christian Kirk in Jacksonville, man, he's a slot receiver and he was six, three, six, four. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just anybody can play slot receiver these days. Yeah, and you got. Traylon Burks is 6'2", so I mean, and he, you're you're putting him in his natural position in the slot. So, I mean, there's there's your slot receiver, a big slot receiver. Yeah, man, they looking for they looking for um, mismatches uh, nowadays, man. If they can if they can put a six foot three slot receiver on a five nine uh on a five nine uh nickel quarterback they gonna take that all day i mean true they just gonna tell them hey go out there and get position on the football coming to you i mean that's just what it is man and all these dbs seem to be six foot plus now regardless of where they're playing at now they try to make sure they're big now because even mm-hmm. though if we got d hop as our number one wide receiver sometimes he might line up in the slide so if you're running zone and your your guys mm-hmm. don't follow people you got to make sure all, all your damn DBs are six foot plus to cover everybody because you never know who's going to wind up on that slot position at any given play. So you got to be prepared. So we got to have a little bit bigger dudes. All right. Let's get to this comment from uh, I got a uh, sportacular. Shout out to you. Hey, five stone. Yeah. Oh, spectacular. Get about him. We need your info as well so we can get you out a Let Ran Cook shirt as well. Bro, you've been here supporting. You've been sending super chats. You have been here showing out for us. So we want to get you a, a Let Ran Cook shirt out. So we need you to reach out to us either on Twitter or on Facebook. Get us your information so we can get one out to you. Man, shout out Chief for two, man. Y'all make sure y'all yeah. like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about us, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this, that, and the third. But um, he says... Who do you got? Who do you guys can replace slash uh complete with Kyle Phillips in this draft? Phillips is a complete non fan. You right. I mean, damn near anybody. I mean, damn near any of these wide receivers that you like. I mean, they can compete with Kyle Phillips and probably take his job as well. And that's not saying that Kyle Phillips is a bad wide receiver. He's not a bad wide receiver. He's just not durable. I mean, this guy can't stay on the field to save his life. And when he did look like he was ready to stay on the field, Mike Vrabel decides, well, since you can't play special teams and you can't block, you're not going to be on (laughs) my football field. So, I mean, there's that, man. But you always got to be looking to um, create competition within the roster. Talking about endorsements, though, for, for players, Callahan had some nice things to say about Kyle Phillips not too long ago. Oh, yeah. Said that he thinks he could be at his natural position now. Um, so it's a shame, too, because his first game against the Giants, his rookie year, first game of the year, he had like four or five, six catches for like 60 yards. And you're like, okay, this kid might be a little player for us. And then, unfortunately, I think that was the peak of his career. Soft yeah. tish guy. Soft tissue. I never want to hear that fucking phrase ever again. <laughs> it's a couple of days for that's, that's like one one of words. Scarf for life. That's oh. like one of the most variable words ever. Soft tissue. Soft <laughs> Man, him and, and freaking blo- wide receivers that block and <laughs> we, I yeah. just couldn't do it, bro. Like, we got to coach teams. better. Players got to play better. That shit. Yeah, it all starts with coaching. <laughs> we were just trying to draft the biggest players we could find. Like that's all we was drafting. <laughs> like, oh, like we just trying to be bullies. That's all we was trying to be under Vrabel. But we still yeah. got we still got Jared's favorite receiver, NWI. I mean, well, that's RJ yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's I, RJ's I, favorite wide receiver. At this point, man, they got to be a fan favorite at this point. Core special teamer. <laughs> you know, he's he he NWI man. <laughs> he's a man that's counted out, man. He still finds a way to get back on the team somehow. And, and he's good for that one or two, you know, three touchdown games he'll have a year. Where he'll randomly pop off for 120 yards and two mm-hmm. touchdowns. On four catches, yeah, four uh, catches. Four well, catches. He, out, he outperforms Traylon Burks every year. He must be doing yeah, something. Hey, right. we were right. That on our show late in the year, where it came to the, it wasn't even funny anymore. Like we joked about it, but they're like, you know what? He's actually at least he stays on the field, shows up every week. You yeah, know, 
leading receiver for touchdowns there for a little bit until <laughs> Will Levis came in and started dropping balls. That's to the top. Sad, man. Jesus Christ. Man, he had as many yards as Julio. <laughs> Julio was here. He had as many yards as Julio. I mean, that's it's sad. crazy. It was sad. Yeah, so, so Kevin, uh, shout out to you, Kev, too. Uh, do we focus more on O line or D line? If you're talking about within the first two picks, honestly, offensive line, I mean, you damn sure got to prioritize offensive line because. I mean, you got a hole at a premium position on the offensive line. And that's left tackle. So if you don't address it in the first round, you definitely got to address it in the second round. Now, if we do address offensive tackle in the first round, you can go defense because you already got wide receiver situated to a point where, you know, we we fairly confident in it. I mean, you could – you, I mean, you could try to get a linebacker, but like I said earlier, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch no linebacker with a uh, second round pick or whatever. If you go uh, address defense, if you go address defense in the second round, you got to look at the line. Yeah, I think we can actually handle linebacker next year. That that defensive class next year, that that's where that can be handled. Um, but we got to do something oh. defensive line um this year too. So. I think that's the beautiful thing about the draft this year for the Titans is that if there's no run path, like we got to do this guy at this part and we got to guide this part this this round, like we can kind of be like, okay, if they take this guy, all right, now we switch to this plan. Like there's so many variables and so many different routes we can go if things happen. And, and like you said earlier, the first four, four and the first seven picks are going to be QBs. So one of the guys that we want out of the four guys that we definitely want, two of those guys are definitely going to be there, if not three, if somebody don't throw in a curveball and Chargers go to somebody like J.C. Latham, and then we're like, okay, well, shit, three of these guys are here for us now. So yeah. it's so much that can happen. That's why I'm kind of looking forward more to this draft than any other because the drafts before you kind of knew what we had to do. And last year we went all offense in the draft. So let's. <laughs> I want to see how Rand actually <laughs> maneuvers and handles this year's draft. Now, what's the last time we picked inside the top 10? It's been a long time. Uh, Davis. Davis, maybe? No? Before? Yeah. Before was, Davis was, yeah, Corey yeah. Davis was there. No, before but, Davis, uh, Adora Jackson draft, which was, what, 2000? Uh, yeah, 5 and 21, uh, I think. 2016 or something like that? Yeah, that was a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's been a while, man. The Titans, I mean – we we were doing good back then, man. I mean, sure, we was winning the division, you know, making little runs in the playoffs. But right now, we down bad, man. I mean, we we back to picking in the top ten. I hope this but, pick right here is our last top ten pick. Ser seriously, if all is not there at seven, do you guys pull? Do you guys pull it on Latham, who's a true true right tackle? Do you take that shot on Ola? Or you you literally take the draft and you make the draft where you're you're making the calls. I want I want your honest opinion. Now, I know we talked about it in the beginning of the show, but you, you know you you have the phone and you're in charge of the title. Let's go around you know from top to bottom here. If all is gone and somebody trades up or the Chargers take him, who are you actually taking now at the seventh pick? If all is enough, if all if all is not there, who what are you doing with that pick to improve well, this roster? Going. What am I doing with the pick? Give me uh give me three options. No, there's no three options. It's either you're sticking and picking or you're trading back. Tell me what you're doing and who you're picking. No, okay, so <laughs> man, if Malik neighbors down, I'm picking Malik neighbors. I well, mean, that's your pick at seven. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm picking Malik neighbors too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. If, if the thoughts not there, Marvin Harrison or Malik neighbors there, I'm I'm going for that. If if Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, and Alt is gone for some weird freaking reason, um, I'm not pulling on Roma Duze at seven. It's it's very, very tempting, but because of the situation we're in, if we wasn't in there before, Rome's worth that seventh pick. But it all those guys that I criterize as seven or trade back are gone now. Trade back, get some more draft capital, and then fix some more of the holes bigger because the leap between Marvin Harrison and Malik neighbors to Roma Duze isn't the same top 10 pick that I have for them. So if alt's gone and neighbors are Harrison there, we're on them. If not, then let's trade back, try to stay before the twenties 
And honestly, my idea would be trade back with with Vikings and get both their first round picks and and handle it that way. Or it says that uh, you got to get a pure left tackle and not taking a right tackle and move it. Yeah, I mean, the Titans been doing a lot of that here lately in uh, multiple positions where they just straight up trying to teach a guy a new position. And we don't have time for that. We need to get guys in here that know their position and know how to play that position. Stick them in it and let them excel. Stop trying to teach them new shit here. Get them in here and get them to a point to where they can be impactful fast as hell as opposed to trying to develop him and, you know, trying to make him do multiplicity, multiplicity or whatever the fucking word Mike Rabel <laughs> used to use all the damn time to describe multiple. these. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, they just say multiple. Uh, don't try to work them in your system. Try to figure yeah. out system that works for them. And I think that's what Brian Callahan will do, and that's kind of what we heard from Will Levis with his QB Room podcast is that, you know, I felt like I was trying to fit into a system. Rather, this is a system I can thrive in and build around me. And I think that was another knock for Vrabel. That, How that fucking nice is that to hear? Bro, it was nice to hear. It really was nice to hear. Yeah. So um, I'm excited to see what he, he does, especially knowing that every time somebody got signed in the free agency, he made sure that he had their number to reach out to him. Uh, bro, I'm falling. I'm, I'm getting sold on Will Levis more and more. Now, I think the word we're looking for, yeah, more, you ever see the movie Multiplicity with uh, – yes. <laughs> That's a good one movie. of them, God dang it. I can see, God dang it. That's a good, that's a good movie. That's a good movie. Most of them. Vinny's always good for one of those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I listen, if if you get Malik, if, if Old's gone and you get Malik Neighbors at seven, you just better hope and pray whatever tackle you pick in the second round works out. Because I'm almost so – Dead set on taking a tackle. You might disagree with me, all, all you know, four of you. But I think if Alt is gone, I would trade back to 10, 12, 13, maybe pick up a third and get Ola at 12 or 13, in my opinion. I think we need, a, we need a left tackle so bad, and I am so tired of hoping that we can find a guy who plays it or – you know, uh, Bill Callahan, such a genius that he could mold anybody into being a left tackle. I call bullshit. I think a left tackle is a position you are built for it or you are not. Okay. It's one way or the other. It's the second most important position, I think, on a football team. And we have been deprived of that for years now. And if we think we found our quarterback, which I all think we do, you got to fucking protect them. You know, I, I am just so dead set on taking a tackle and i think it's not the sexy pick it never is but the smartest we're, we're not in it to be sexy we're, we're in it to win it you know yeah, i just feel like we become so much better of a football team with a better left tackle bro because oh, last year yeah. man, this it hurt Tannehill. like even though Tannehill didn't have a good season he could have played way better if he had protection like he was getting yeah. smacked 100 percent know? And that's what's the cool thing about this draft is that we've all gave out different scenarios, and I think the fans would be happy with each one of those different scenarios. Oh, like, yeah, that's really Trent, Trent can't go wrong because even in that scenario, I'll still be fine with that. Let's go get Olu. I like Olu too, so I'm still fine with that in that situation. So it's like you can literally let the board come to you. Seven's come. All right, let's see how the board is. Do we think we can fall back, get a second-round pick, and still get guys that we want? Absolutely. Let's, then let's do it. I mean, I trust Rand's skill – and his grading last year, they didn't even think Gronk uh, uh, Skronsky was going to be there for us. And then he wind up falling for us and be there. So he seems to know how to accurately uh, judge and scale these players when they come into the draft. Same thing with Will Levis. Didn't think he was going to be out the first round. Then we trade up real quick day one or day two to go make sure we go get him and everything. So I, I like I said, more and more f- tra- trust and faith and, and Rand Carthon and what he's doing. He, he clearly knows what the hell he's doing and knows how to evaluate properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Before we get out of here, nice to watch his national title game. What do you think the ceiling is, regardless of who we draft? Let's say it could be neighbors, could be uh, all. What do you think the ceiling is for this team this year? Because I'm, I'm of the belief that this division is still very much up in the air. The Texans look like they're ahead, you know, a step above the rest right now. 
I think even if we don't win that division, I still think that we could turn it around quickly and win between seven and nine games and fight for that last wild card spot. What do you – cautious, being cautiously optimistic, what do you think the ceiling is for this team this year? Or are we just hoping that – we've sorry to cut you off. Or, or are we just hoping that Will Levis shows us enough in year two that – yeah, we, we thought we liked him, but after this year, we're sure that he's the guy going forward. Or are we shooting for higher than that? I could get I could get him a I'm gonna go nine. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay more on the realistic side. The two tone in me says ten, but I'm gonna stick with the realistic side. Nine is nine to beat a ceiling. Um six would be the floor. I'll say from seven to ten wins. I'm within that range, man. And I, I do believe that Titans will start off slow. I think we're going to start off maybe a two and four or, excuse me, we're probably like two and four, probably two and five. And they're going to gonna, they're gonna get rolling out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? We got one of those games we just going to light a team up and then it's gonna, we're going to get hot from moving on from there. Point. You know what I'm saying? They probably have a win seat towards the end. Because I, I just feel like – but Brian Callahan's about to come in and he's gonna bring with Bill Callahan's gonna come in and bring, man. I just it's gonna take a minute for these players to click, man. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna take a minute. And you know, I, I'm already expecting them to start off slow. But we just keep off. I mean, it's, it's a young team, but you know, a lot of players that, that are together that's gotta learn how to play with each other. So we'll see what we look like towards the end. Yeah, for me, it's it, the floor being six and then the ceiling being optimistic is eleven. And that's just because of we might be able to catch some teams off guard expecting this to be the old Tennessee Titans. Now this is different, not knowing, yeah, we saw what Will Levis did last year, but now it's a whole different, t- completely different type of offense. We got new weapons. It's not Derrick Henry back there in the backfield no more. So you don't know when we're going to run or how th- you have no clue what is going on. So we have the possibility of catching some teams off guard, not knowing what we're doing, but that's going to be like RJ said, that's going to depend on how quick these players pick up to what Brian Callahan's doing and how well they can all work together. And usually that does take time. So mm-hmm. six being floored just because we, this team can't be worse than the team we had last year. It, it just can't, the talent's better on paper. You, you just can't be worse. So six floor 11 being optimistic. We can catch some people off guard. I yeah, want to have a last place schedule. You know, I uh, I think our schedule might be a little more favorable. I, I think we are being – we're always on the look by the national media. I think we, we will catch some teams off guard. I tend to agree where I think the the floor is six. And if it lands on six, just let us know that Levis is the guy, even if it is only six wins. Because if it's six wins and we need to find a silver lining, it's got to be that Will Levis is the guy going forward. That being said, the difference, in my opinion, between 11 and 6 and 6 and 11 is this much. You know, I, I think you look at teams that turn around in a year. Philly was 7 and 9 the year before they won the Super Bowl. Cincinnati was, what, 4 and 12 the year before they almost won the Super Bowl. Not to say that I'm comparing us to them, but I think it's it's very realistic in the NFL to where the – the, the disparity in, in talent is not very far between an 11 and 6 team and 6 and 11. So if you could catch teams off guard and you get us believing in ourselves, I mean, I think this team could win nine games and fight for a, a wild card spot. There's going to be a lot of film on C.J. Stroud this year. You know, yeah. the kid is immensely, immensely talented. They're doing the right things by him, loading him up with talent. Um, but we'll see if he can avoid that, you know, that, that sophomore slump that seems to plague a lot of – you know, quarterbacks who really thrive in their rookie year. So that being said, I think if the low point is six, the high point is nine. If a few things go our way, um, then maybe ten. But we shall see. But I was just curious to see what your 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 non biased opinion was. And I think most Titans fans, who I think are at least somewhat intelligent, all have the same. You know, six, seven wins, maybe eight or nine. I think that's a fair statement. I'm- I look I'm, at it like this. No, I'm Vinny. gonna go ahead, RJ. Go ahead, RJ. I'll, I'll say this, Vinny. I do agree with your statement, though. That the, the margin uh between six and ten wins is, is is very very small because if you look at us last year, and we wasn't a good football <laughs> team at all last year, and we could have won nine games. This year, oh, yeah. you, go back, you look at that same game. You go oh, look game. At 
both, both times against the Colts. We could have beat them both times. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We look at the uh the Texans. We should have beat the Texans. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just a lot of games that you just go back and look. Even the Ravens, we were going toe to toe with the Ravens. Like and they almost went to the Super Bowl. Like you we know, let like games get away from us. Yeah, we yeah. let games get away from us. Man. And a lot of it was just us not adjusting. A lot of a lot of us was our offensive line just being pure garbage. <laughs> it just could not block nothing. It kept it was, killing the offense. Like, it was that. It was that, and it was the defensive backs. We got fucking torched in games yeah. because the quarterbacks would just throw it up. Now we got three guys. <laughs> we got three guys in the back end of this defense that are gonna lock some fucking people down. Yeah. And was, I'm sorry, I'm cursing because I'm getting hot right now because the floor for this Damn. team right now is eight, and the ceiling's Ooh. eleven. Okay, Ooh, because look at the people, the look at the people, look at the people who we brought in for this team. Okay, it's similar to what the Bengals did when they went to the fucking Super Bowl run. Okay, we yeah. got Cushionberry, one of the uh, one of the best uh, offensive centers last year. Okay, if you draft all at seven, that solidifies that offensive line, I believe, because I think we're going to go after after the draft. We're going to go to a veteran right tackle. That line's done. Okay, now you have on the back end. If you got the offense, you have Will Levis. You're protecting him. You have two backs with Tajay Spears and, and Tony Pollard. This team, I'm telling you right now, with the, with the games that we lost last year, with the three, four games, we should have had ten, nine to ten wins. This team is on the rise with Brian Callahan because nobody knows how his offense is going to be next year. Now with the hel helm of Will Levis, and if he gets another, God forbid, another wide receiver in the second round or the first round, fuck, dude, this offense is going to be on fire. All yeah. Right? So, so the floor is eight for me. So fuck DraftKings and, and everybody else that's putting us <laughs> at six and a half and and putting Will Levis as the 15th best quarterback in the AFC, which is bullshit. That you have Michael Penix and you have Anthony Richardson and you have or Joe Flacco and all these other guys above him. That, and that's a crock of shit because this team, I'm telling you right now, is going to make noise. And the Houston Texans now, because every single team that Stephon Diggs has been on, he's been he's been the diva. Not Malik Neighbors. He's been a diva. So so when, when C.J. Stroud goes through that sophomore slump because he's going to do it and he starts throwing the ball to Tank Dell, that's when the, you're going to have that bickering on the sidelines and, and it's going to be that culture problem in that locker room with the Houston Texans. And that's when the Titans come in and win the AFC South next year. Mike, hey, I'm right with it. I'm I'm right with it. Oh, he, Jared's got me ready to run through the fucking wall right now. Yeah, yeah, man. Right it's now, just, just hype yeah, me yeah. up, man. But I can tell you this right here. If the Titans can win four games within this division, they're going to be setting themselves up nice yeah. to get to a wild card spot or even win the division. Yeah. 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 So good, man. great talk, fellas, man. Ooh, uh, man, good, man. It's always dope as hell when we got y'all in the building, man. We shot Sal could have been with us, but yeah. hey, man, I know Sal rocking with us in spirit of Vinny, Jared, man. Pop y'all shit, man. Tell them. Where tell everybody where they can find y'all at, what days y'all are going to be doing the show, anything y'all got coming up in the future, man. Let the people know about it. I've had it, Jared. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, Sick Podcast uh, Titans on Twitter, and obviously, we go live on Sunday nights. Um, and we got something going on for the draft. I'm not going to say anything just yet, I'm going to say probably on our show, maybe tomorrow. Uh, but we do have something in line possibly for the draft, like a live party or something. Um, and, and we record on Tuesdays. We Episodes drop on Fridays. We've got draft specials going on right now. We just dropped Ola. Uh, we had Joe Walt. So there's going to be Brock Bowers, Malik Neighbors, um, Marvin Harrison Jr. All those guys are going to be coming out as well. So I appreciate you uh, guys for having us on. Um, like and follow our show on YouTube, Sick Pot Talking Titans. Support these guys, Titans Coliseum. I mean, you guys, you know, kick ass too as well. I uh, love your show and we love being a part of it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Like Jared said, uh, our Twitter is at Sick Pod Titans. We're on Instagram. Our uh, YouTube channel is a Sick Podcast Talking Titans. Like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. And maybe we'll try and get down to Nashville and, uh, you know, absolutely, have a man. Party with us. I was down Let's there. Lab. Yeah, I was down there this year for, for week two. <laughs> um against uh the uh the chargers when it sh the rain shit on us and we ended up winning that game in overtime but it was it was well worth it but thank you guys for having us on uh i i appreciate it it was most fun i had in a long time i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie nah yeah, yeah man you most definitely got to kick back sometimes man and that's the that's the type of atmosphere we like to bring man we well maybe you guys can come up, north, come up north there's a game in dc this year man. you're shaking your head at no what's wrong with hey <laughs> if, if if it's in september i'll consider it any other month 
uh, after that, hell no. I'm not going to go on the north in October, November, or December. No, I am not doing any northern states. No, I already know what this what that feels like. I don't want to experience that again. It's all four seasons, baby. When it's hot, it's hot. When it's cold, it's cold. It's football weather. Come on. Man. <laughs> Hey, I'm not in game shape anymore. <laughs> I ain't conditioned for that anymore, man. But, uh, man, let's go ahead and uh, run through our shit so we can get up out of here, man. I know y'all trying to watch National Championship, and I'm trying to watch wrestling. So, Firestone, I'm talking. I thought we were trying to watch Multiplicity tonight. No, we ain't watching no Multiplicity tonight. <laughs> hey, I said it, God damn it. Hey. hey. Me, man. Multiplicity. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Let me go. No. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Lions Den Beer Collection.com. Make sure you go check them out. Go get all the finest beard products so you can get your beard looking in a tip top shape. Or if you're trying to start your beard, go there. They got the pills for you to start it off on the right track. Go to Lions Den Beer Collection.com, promo code Coliseum, and get 25% off your order. This episode is also brought to you by SunnySmilesCoffee.com, premium freshly roasted coffee. Go check them out. You get free shipping on all your U.S. orders. Make sure y'all go to TitansColiseum.com, sign up for the email list, read the blogs and the articles we got going. Charm Sports has been writing up some terrific articles, especially for the upcoming draft, so y'all go check that out. As well as go and grab merch. The Let Rain Cook merch is out now. Make sure you go grab it before the draft so everybody's showing up to the draft party, showing support. Um, as well as go ahead with Titans, Titans, uh, two tone militia. Y'all go follow them on Facebook. Go join the group. Let's get all these Titan community all built together so we can all collaborate, talk, have a good time, and just have good Titans fans all together as well. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. <laughs> and if you, you know, and I gotta say it one more time, man. If you go, for it. go on Apple Music, man, Spotify, all the big name platforms, man, download Romeo's in the game, man. I promise you, you enjoy it, man. It's a good song to work out to, man, especially if you're a big a huge Titan fan, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I wasn't going to say anything in the Friday, but fuck it. I'm going to say it tonight. Five Stone, make sure you clip it because, yeah. like I told y'all last week, man, we got a surprise for y'all, and – we got our 100th episode coming up here soon. Actually, it'll be uh, the Monday show after the draft, which is April the 29th. And because we appreciate y'all so much, and y'all know that, we are giving away a free autograph Jeffrey Simmons jersey, man. And you got to put in some work for it. I ain't going to lie. Ain't just going to get this motherfucker to y'all for free. You got to put in some work for it. So... In order, in order to be eligible to win this autograph Jeffrey Simmons jersey, I need y'all to go and download RJ's, well, Romel. We got to go into rapper mode now. We need y'all to go download Romel's in the game. Go download that single, and then when you download that single, screenshot it. Do a video, you rocking out to it, whatever. Just tag us in it, and boom, you'll be in the game. You'll be ready to go, and we're going to pick the winner on our 100th episode of the Titans Coliseum Podcast on April the 29th. <clears throat> yes, yeah, sir. whoever got the best video going to win, man. How about that? <laughs> hey, got the there you go, man. And whoever's got the worst video gets a signed sick podcast pillow from Sal. <laughs> you like <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh shit. Man. That'd be dope, man. That'd be dope. But man, we finna go ahead and let y'all get up out of here, man. Vinny Sal, Vin, well, Sal and Spirit. Vinny yeah. Sal and Jerry. Hey, appreciate y'all, man. Y'all make sure y'all go turn up the sick podcast, man. Everybody, enjoy your week. We'll see y'all Friday and tighten the fuck up. Let's go. Yeah.